In my previous PV cable sizing video and in my book, I oversized the cable between the SOAR panels and the charge controller. The design is safe, but the method I used requires a thicker PV cable, which is more expensive than you actually need. So in this video, I want to correct that and show you the proper way to do the voltage drop calculation. Quickly explained. The longer you make a wire, the more resistance it has. That resistance turns into heat, which is a loss. That loss shows up as a drop in voltage, not in current. So the voltage effectively drops along the cable. We limit the voltage drop to 3%. For example, if your string of panels is 100 volts, 3% means you can lose about 3 volts along the cable leaving you with 97 volts at the end. If the current is 10 amps and the loss is 3 volts, then we have a total power loss of 30 watts. In a typical off-grid system, the cable between the SOAR panels and the MPPT is usually the longest run. So that's where it makes sense to calculate the voltage drop. Let me show you how we calculate it using an example. We will use two 200 watt panels in series. These are the panel specifications. First, we make sure the cable can carry the current. This is the maximum current calculation. We take the short circuit current, which is 8.91 amps, and multiply by 1.56, and we become 13.9 amps. That 1.56 factor is simply two safety margins stacked on top of each other. We are effectively derating the cable. The first is a standard for continuous current. And the second is for higher temperatures because the wire is exposed to direct sunshine. PV cable uses 90 degrees Celsius insulation. A 14 gauge or 2.5 mm square cable is already enough to safely carry that current. So from a pure current point of view, 14 gauge is the minimum. If we are going to use this wire for a short distance, this is going to be okay. However, since this wire is long, we need to do a voltage drop calculation. So let's start by gathering all the necessary information to calculate it. First, we need the string voltage and the cable length. Remember the SOAR panel specifications? Two panels in series means the working voltage, or VMP, is multiplied by two panels. This gives us 47.5 volts. And the panels are 50 feet, or 15 meters away from the charge controller. That's the one-way distance. The voltage drop calculator will automatically double it for the round trip. I'm going to show you the old and new methods, so you can see the difference. In my old method, I used ISC times 1.56 in the voltage drop calculation. So for this panel, it's 13.9 amps. So for the calculator, we enter the previously calculated voltage of 47.5 volts, a one-way distance of 50 feet, and a current of 13.9 amps. And then we adjust the wire diameter to limit the voltage drop to 3%. With those numbers, the calculator tells us we need an 8 gauge or 10 mm square PV cable and the voltage drop is 2.28%. An 8 gauge PV cable will cost you $77 for 50 feet. Now, let's repeat the voltage drop calculation with the new method. Instead of using the ISC times 1.56, we're using ISC times 1.25. That's because in a voltage drop calculation, you don't need to add the additional safety factor for direct sunshine. So for this example, 
it's 11.14 amps. All the other numbers stay the same. With these values, the calculator now tells us we can use a 10 gauge or 6 mm square PV cable instead of 8 gauge. A 10 gauge PV cable will cost you $50 for 50 feet. So by correcting the current in the voltage drop calculation, you will save $25 on the cable. Before we're done, we have to do one last check. We need to make sure the calculated cable of 10 gauge or 6 mm square can carry the maximum current in the wire. Remember the previously calculated maximum current of 13.9 amps? Let's see if this cable can handle the current. From the table, 10 gauge can carry 40 amps, so we're good here. Why do we have to do this safety check? Let me explain with another example. In higher voltage systems, for example a commercial string at 450 volts DC, the voltage drop will often be very small, and the calculator might suggest a surprisingly small wire diameter. For example, if we change the voltage to 450 volts and the current to 35 amps, the calculator might say that 14 gauge or 2.5 mm square has a voltage drop of 2.42%. That's good, right? Not so quick. If we look at the current table, 14 gauge is only rated for about 25 amps, and we need 35 amps. That's why we always do the final safety check, to see if the calculated cable is not below the minimum current rating. In this case, we would have to move up to a 10 gauge PV cable rated for 40 amps. One more thing. The cable between the panels and the MPPT is not only the longest, but it's also the most dangerous. With panels in series, it's very easy to go above 50 volts DC, and that's where electric shock and DC arcs can become dangerous. So to make it safe, follow these steps. Connect your battery to the MPPT and program it. Then. Connect the PV cable to the MPPT without connecting your solar panels. Then connect your solar panels, measure the voltage and the polarity with a multimeter. If everything is correct, turn on the PV disconnect switch. Respect the maximum PV input voltage and input current ratings from the MPPT datasheet and don't work on live PV strings. So to wrap it up, my old method used the short circuit current times 1.56 for both the max current and voltage drop calculation. And the new method still uses 1.56 for the maximum current, but now I'm using 1.25 for the voltage drop. This often results in smaller PV wire and extra savings while still being safe. Sorry for giving you the wrong information, but I believe this correction was needed. I have updated the other video and my book will be updated as soon as possible. I am curious to know, what size of PV cable are you using? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.